Well, I've been weaving my piece for a little while, and what's happened now is I've come to a point where my thread is, is getting so short that I'm not going to be able to weave much longer. Uh, I generally replace threads when the, um, when the part going through the needle is at about six inches. That gives me plenty enough to work with, uh, and it's not, you know, and it's not, I won't waste too much. Um, your first piece of thread that you use is going to, to be used up quicker than the rest of your, your thread, mainly because you've got this 12 inch tail at the end. That again, you'll be using later, so don't worry about it. Uh, you'll probably be using three pieces of thread in total for your piece. And um, so let's go ahead and first we're going to finish off uh, the piece of thread that, that we have on our needle. Uh, what we need to do is first weave it back into your work. I'm going to go ahead and pass it through this, this side bead. And there are two schools of thought. Um, some people believe that you just weave it in and out of your work in a zigzag pattern over and over and over again. And see what I'm doing right now is I'm taking the needle and I'm going down through one, two, actually it's even two beads is a little difficult so I'm not going to try a third bead here. So I'm pulling it through two beads. Checking to make sure it's not wrapped around any uh, the bead up here. And in fact it is not. I'm going to go down in these white beads. Now, and in a second I'm going to, to zigzag back on myself. And here I go, I'm going to just move one step over and I'm going to go back up in the next row. Now some people are believe that if you do this three or four times, it's fine. Your, your, uh, your, knots, your thread will hold and you don't, won't have your knots in your work. I think that that's an offshoot of embroidery where you don't want any knots in the back of your work. Now, in fact, I am of a different persuasion. I like knots. I feel like that they make your piece stronger. And in fact, if during a break in the class, if you'd like to go up and take a look at uh, my award-winning necklace that I have on display in the front, in fact, I made that piece not using knots and I'm continually repairing it. Um, given the nature of the piece, uh, I can never sell it. Um, it might be for sale if I thought that it would hold together, um, but I won't sell anything to my clients that I don't know isn't sturdy and will last a lifetime. So in fact, what we're going to do is uh, two half hitches. This is in fact not a double half hitch as in your instructions, because we're going to do them going in opposite directions. Um, because I have, I'm using the dark thread here, I'm, I purposely brought my thread up between two of the red beads. Now I'm going to take my th uh, needle and run it down between the beads, two red beads, and up underneath a bar of thread and back up again to the same side of the work. So in essence you can see I've formed a loop here. Now my thread is uh, pretty short so I'm going to back through the uh, loop and that's going to form a knot which I'm going to snug tight. Now the reason that I'm calling this two half hitches instead of a double half hitch is if I was doing a double half hitch I would actually go in the same direction and just make do the same thing again. But to make it more secure I'm actually going to reverse the direction of the hatch hitch by turning the piece around and running it uh, the thread underneath the same bar from the opposite direction. So now I'm running it under the bar and making the same loop. Again, because my thread is so short, I'm backing the back end through. If the thread was a little longer, I would, I would send the front end of the needle through. And I've made another knot. So now I've got a pretty secure uh, connection there. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a couple more zigzags just to be sure. Um, what the worst thing in the world is to have a, a piece that you've worked many hours on and then have it fall apart. 
So I'm going to put like one more zigzag in because I'm again because I'm using a dark color thread here. I'm going to end this in the red section. That's because if there's a little piece of pop-up thread, if it's in a dark area of your uh, work, it's not going to show up. Now if I was using a crystal thread, the white thread, I would actually be aiming to end it in the, in the white section of the, of the um, stripes. So now here I come up my last bead. I'm caught here. I'm going to loosen it up with my fingers and I actually is taking the needle to tease it loose. Pull it taut. Now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm actually going to pull it as taut as I can and clip it so you see no evidence at all of the uh, thread. But now I have nothing here to weave with. So in fact I have to re-thread my needle. Now this time, just so that you can see how um, this would work with crystal thread, I'm going to continue weaving this bracelet with the crystal thread. I've already cut a piece off. Again, to be a good role model, I'm going to use the, um, the flat nose pliers to flatten the end of the um, thread. But you know it's the, it's, it's the least kept secret in, in town. I like to use my teeth. It's up to you whether you want to use your teeth when you change your thread or whether you want to come up and use a pair of my pliers. I'm not telling you either to do either thing. You should know that I roller skate without helmets and I ride bikes without helmets too, but I do use, I do use a seatbelt in the car and I don't drive and use a cell phone at the same time. So I'm sort of a middle of the road for safety. Again, I'm having trouble threading, wearing only one pair of reading glasses. So I'm stopping. I'm putting my second pair of reading glasses on. Suddenly the hole seems much larger. I can see where it's the thread is flattened. And on the first try, I've managed to put the thread right through the needle. So again, I'd like to remind you that when you have difficulty threading your needle, it's generally a matter of eyesight because the hole is just so tiny. It's not a litmus test on how well you see. It's just we're working with very, very tiny materials. Now this time we're starting the thread using crystal. So we, I'm actually going to start in the white section because we don't um, you know, we, we don't want the, uh, a white piece of thread popping out in the middle of the red and showing itself. So you can see I'm, I'm putting the needle in the white beads. And I'm starting a little bit back. Where you start is really a personal decision. Now, if this time I don't need to leave a long tail because I'm, uh, I'm not going to use it for anything. So I'm going to leave about a two inch tail and I'm going to actually secure it down with my thumb so I don't pull it out by mistake. I'm going to turn around, go back down. <coughs> and I'm going to make my half hitches right here. So here's my first one. Excuse me. Turn my piece over. Here's my second one. I'm going to turn my piece right side again and I need to see where I need to go. I actually need to end up with my thread coming out right here. So I'm going to kind of zigzag back and forth across the piece. I'm going to come down again.
I'm going to come up. I'm going to go back down through the red bead. And in just a moment, I'll be ready to continue on weaving. But before I do that, I've got a little bit of business to finish. I have a tail here. I like to get rid of my tails as quickly as possible because they clutter up my piece. So I'm going to clip the tail off close to the piece. Now I can pick up, you can see you really can't see any evidence of either the half hitch for the dark because it was in the red. You can't see any evidence of the half hitch of the white because it was in the light section of my product. I'm going to go back picking up two red beads. I'm going to go ahead and just continue beading along just as I did before until my stripe section is long enough and I'm ready to start my logo.